Hey guys, what is happening? Welcome back to another video here today. Now in this video, we're going to be taking a look at exactly why this Castle 1721 2400 KV motor is insane. Just to get things started, it seems like every time I open up the box to the product or I saw the product on the website in order to purchase it, I was faced with all kinds of warnings. Here is the piece of paper that you can find when you open the box to the motor. It essentially says here, this is a product usage warning. The first line says something about the motor being insane. The next line says the motor is pretty ridiculous. The third line says you gotta know what you're doing and so forth. And then you finally get to the very last point here and it pretty well tells you that there is no warranty that comes with this motor. Online, when I was making the purchase for this motor, it was very clear that the motor doesn't come with a warranty due to its nature and performance levels. However, it doesn't just end there. There's also no warranty if you get a Castle Creation speed control and connect it up to this motor. And to go even one step further, if you hook this motor up to a battery pack that comes from who knows where, you may not have a warranty with that as well. And this lovely piece of paper goes through and describes exactly why. So there you have it, the very first point that I'm not even actually counting as a real point on why this motor is absolutely insane. Now let's move on to our actual first point, which deals with the size comparison of this motor. Keep in mind, this motor is designed for that 1 8th, 1 7th scale type of radio control vehicle. This motor here as well is designed for a 1 8 scale radio control vehicle. And as you can see, the size difference in length is significant. This motor here, the one that we're talking about, is almost double the size in length of our motor that is perfectly suited as a 4S motor for any type of radio controlled 1.8 scale vehicle. Now another thing that you can notice alongside the actual length of it is the diameter difference. As you can see, the motor that we're talking about today, it has a larger diameter can. Now you might be sitting there thinking, come on Ryan, like obviously a bigger motor is going to provide us with more power. This is like Motors 101. It's the first thing you learn about a brushless motor. Well, this is the thing. You're right. Okay, so let's move on to point two and point three because point two and point three is where all of the magic happens. This is where the motor stands out completely from the crowd. So let's go and take a look at this motor by getting rid of our other motor here. Now that we have that other motor off the table, I want to go and focus our attention on this guy. So the first thing we're going to do, since we have no warranty anyway, we may as well just take it apart because it doesn't matter if I pop it open. I'm not trying to save a warranty here. In this case, all we need to do is pop these three screws off so that we can get this front cover plate off and we can pull the rotor right out of the motor, exposing everything internal to it. So give me a quarter second to go and do that. And there we have it. We ended up taking those three screws off and the cap just slides and pulls right out. What's interesting is that the cap itself centers up the shaft. It's not the actual screws that go into the body of the motor here. Next thing we have to do is take these two washers off so that we don't lose them. I'm gonna place them off to the side here. I'm also gonna place these fasteners over there as well as the cap to keep all those together so we can see them. And now what I'm gonna do is pull off the rotor, get this rotor removed from the body of the motor. So give me another quarter second to get that done. All right, here we have the rotor pulled right out from that brushless motor. And this is where you can see a significant difference between this one and another one if you've seen a rotor from a motor before. What I'll do to show you the difference is I'll push this body off to the side and I'll bring in the other rotor. So I want to keep these very spaced out so they don't all bang into each other all in one shot. So this is a rotor from a Castle Creations motor and this is a rotor from a completely different manufacturer. So what you can notice about these rotors here is they are not as nice and shiny as this one. So you can see how that's even re reacting to this uh, you got to keep these things so far away because they have so much magnetic strength. This motor here has a high strength Kevlar wrap that goes right around 
the actual magnet. So you have a four pole motor here and you can see all the different magnets. I can see the shape of that magnet right there and I can also see the winds going around the entire can of that motor. So that's what actually makes that rotor hold all together. If you didn't have all of this Kevlar wrap going around the motor, these magnets when it hit a certain speed would completely let go and the motor would be finished. Now the big thing about the Kevlar wrap is it pretty well limits you to about 60,000 RPM for a motor that is roughly about this size. And that's where our 1721 2400 kV motor from Castle makes up the biggest difference here. This rotor does not have any type of Kevlar wrapping going around the magnets. In fact, you can't even see the profile of the magnets. You don't even know that those magnets are there. This is a stainless steel sleeve that you can see is made up in two sections that pretty well houses the the magnets and not allows them to fly out from the core of the rotor. The big advantage to using this type of sleeve is now you increase the strength, the holding strength, so that those motor magnets don't let go. This gets us up to a maximum of 90,000 RPM, which is essentially what Castle is telling us. This is a major reason as to why we can get so much performance out of this motor. Now let's move on to the final item that makes this motor truly spectacular in its form. Obviously when we go and look inside the can of the motor, we don't necessarily see the makeup of the windings and how they all come together. However, we do know that Castle advertises this motor as a 0.5 Y wound motor and this is very 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 significant it's significant in a multiple different amount of ways Typical castle motors of the 1/8 scale platform or larger have all been 1Y wound brushless motors. The wind is what allows us to capitalize on the design changes made to the rotor so that we can maximize the total amount of RPM to use in our vehicles. Let's use an example so that I can paint this picture a little bit more clearly. Now let's imagine that this Castle 1721 was actually sold as a 1Y wound motor. What would that mean? mean for us? Well, we know that the 0.5Y, this motor, is actually 2400 kV. Therefore, a 1Y wound motor is going to be 1200 kV. Now, in order to maximize on the total amount of RPM, ADS, which is the exact voltage that this motor can work very well with, is not going to be enough with 1200 kV to utilize that band between 60 and 90,000 RPM. In order to actually do that, you'd have to, instead of going 8S, you'd have to go to 16S. Can you imagine using 16S on our radio control cars just to get the same performance as to what you expect out of this motor? Well, it's a lot more convenient and practical for us to use 8S. And there's a whole bunch of different reasons as to why, but you get the picture. When you get below one turn, all of those types of windings are essentially competition type winds. They produce a ton of power, but they do so by pulling a lot of current. And that's why you get this warning label with this specific motor telling you you need to know what you're doing in order to make this motor work. Well guys, there you go. We've pretty well covered exactly why we have all these different kinds of warnings with our motor and essentially why we don't have a warranty included with this motor and anything that you decide to hook up with it as well. If you do decide to go out there and pick up one of these motors for yourself, just make sure that you're an advanced experienced user who really ultimately knows what you're doing. And if you do not decide that you want to go and select this motor for your specific application, However, you still are interested in it, all you need to do is follow the channel here. Make sure you're a subscriber so that you can see the videos that we put out. I'm going to be using this absolutely overpowered insane motor in a 100 mile per hour build and then who knows where we'll go in the future. As always guys, like the video if you do. Make certain you keep the smoke on the inside. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.